Support for Sports Page is provided by First Central Bank. Full service banking from six locations in Warrensburg, Holden, Higginsville, and Odessa. More information is available on their Facebook page or at the website firstcentral.net. Member FDIC. By the University Store. The University Store is the official headquarters for Mules and Jenny's Emblem Clothing, Gifts, and UCM Memorabilia. Books, office supplies, art supplies, and more are available at the University Store, located on the lower floor of the Elliott Union on the UCM campus in Warrensburg by Parker Supermarket and Pharmacy, a home-owned and operated store that listens to its customers. Whether it's a hypoallergenic formula or a new exotic vegetable, Parker strives to serve the unique needs of the area. The mission at Parker's is to make grocery shopping a welcoming experience. And promotional support for Sports Page is provided by 1450 Coco and 98.5 The Bar. 1450 Coco and 98.5 The Bar, the radio home of University of Central Missouri Athletics. Straight ahead on the Central Missouri Sports page, Mules football coach Jim Sabota stops by to talk about last week's win at Fort Hay State in this Saturday's Senior Day showdown with 7-0 Pittsburgh State. Basketball practice is underway, and Mules head coach Kim Anderson will be in studio to preview the 2011-2012 UCM Mules season. In our sports page, student athlete spotlights. We'll get to know the Mules' leading tackler, and we'll meet the quarterback of the Jennies volleyball team. So stick around, your weekly one-hour look at UC Mules and Jenny Sports is coming up next. Hello again, everybody, and thanks for watching the University of Central Missouri Sports Page. I'm Sean Jones, and joining me to kick off this week's show is Mules football coach Jim Sabota. Coach Boda, welcome back. Hi, Sean. Well, you have to be an awfully happy head coach right now. Your team went on the road to play a conference opponent and really played well in all three phases. We did, and, and um, you know, sometimes it's not bad to get away. We had a tough loss and uh, kind of regrouped there and just really proud of the kids. Uh, you know, we intended to come out and try to play fast and and um, and do well right away. And you know, like you said, all phases uh, did just that. The defensive improvement from the previous week to the Fort Hayes State game was outstanding. Sure, some of that can be based on who you're playing, but not all the things that we saw improvement in out in Hayes. Well, actually, they're a pretty good rushing team, so we were real happy with the defense and uh, particularly did well in early downs and uh, got them in a situation where. Uh, you know, there was a longer second and third downs and, and uh, you know, really just uh, got us the ball back a lot on offense and, and overall a great effort. I don't know if quietly is the right term, but it didn't seem like it until you looked at the numbers. 613 yards of offense in this football game, the most in the Jim Sabota era, and we've racked up a lot of yards in the last two years. We have done quite match up with the uh, point tunnel that we had, and we had uh, a couple turnovers there that uh, you're never happy about, but... Uh, you know, good effort by the kids. It was like 400 and some yards to 18, so that's a pretty dominating performance in the first half. Also very encouraging to see 206 yards rushing. Your run game was really good. It was, uh, you know, it was something that we continue to work on. Uh, you know, it's more difficult to develop your run game, and especially when you devote as much time to the pass as we do. And, you know, we've uh, cut some things back a little bit uh, scheme-wise, and it seemed to help us. Seven games in, I also want to give some credit to the guys up front, the offensive line. That was the fifth game where Tommy was not sacked. Five out of seven, that's pretty darn good. That's an impressive stat when you throw the ball 50 times mm -hmm. a game. Uh, if, you, if, you know, if you're throwing 20 or 25, uh, it's one thing. But, uh, you know, it's an you know, effort by a lot of people. Obviously, the offensive line's got to do a great job, and Tommy's got to get the ball out on time. We've got to run good routes. Tommy Corwin, the senior quarterback from St. Louis DeSmet, had an outstanding football game, 431 yards of total offense. That's the fourth highest total in school history. You've got Eric Cerneski, Eric Cerneski, Eric Cerneski, and now Tommy Corwin, and it's great for him to join that group. And by throwing for 398 yards, that was the fifth straight game that Tommy had thrown for over 300, which tied Eric's school record as well. 
Well, when you're breaking those kinds of records, it's pretty impressive. And again, uh, Tommy would be the first one to say that you know uh, he gets a lot of help from his uh, supporting cast. And a good start for the Mules as we go to the highlights, the 20th ranked Mules in Fort Hayes State. These are courtesy of the MIAA Television Network. Uh, on the drive, very first drive of the game, there you see Corwin hitting Taylor Dyer. Well timed pass, you can see it right there. So the Mules really having no problem moving the ball down the field to start this football game. It certainly was a theme of things to come. Here's one of the maybe unfortunate things to occur in this game, a fumble on this play. You're on the drive after the game. You know, we talked to Tommy on the post game. He ends up breaking or, you know, getting up there in the record book with his performance, but he still blamed himself for that one. Well, it was a questionable call there, but you know, you get hang on to the ball. But here's the way the defense sets the tone for the night. They come out and get a three and out here. As you see on third down and long, Ramon Hunter, the freshman from Brentwood in St. Louis on a great stop getting you the ball back. Yeah, like I said, get him into uh, long, long uh, yardage situations and then we get the ball back. And there's Taylor Dyer on a speed sweep, the senior from Warrensburg involved early in the offense, making some good plays. And how about this pass and catch from Corwin to Cannon? Love to see that. Again, uh, uh, Cannon ran a great route there and Tommy threw it on time and put it right in. Hard to defend that. And this is, of course, as I mentioned, after a three and out. So the Mules get it back. Good play action there, good pump fake. How about this route? Kyson Ginevan, well done for the youngster from Olathe. It was, and you know, he just stepped in there, ran a perfect route, and made a great grab. Great blocking on the right side. Levance Taylor unscathed into the end zone. And the Mules are on the board 7-0 with 8.36 to go in the first quarter. There's a draw play handoff by Fort Hayes, but it doesn't fool your guys. Paul Hughes comes up, makes the stop. You're going to get the football right back. We're going to see a great return here from Marlon Douglas. Uh, those things on special teams are really important. Uh, obviously, change the field position right there. Could have been backed up. Instead, we're in their territory. Great decleat block back there, too, by Zach Lineball. Takes an effort by a lot of people on those returns. So the Mules, again, with great starting field position. Look at Tommy. Feel the pressure and then throw it over the middle to Corwin or to Cannon, who's wide open. Well, they've decided to blitz us there, and sometimes that'll happen. You get wide open guys if they don't cover them right. Love seeing that run defense. Rico Wilson filling the gap. Good play action here. Throw it out in the flat. How about Sean Gorman, the redshirt freshman uh, fullback, stepping in three big catches in this one. First catch right there of his career, and a, a big one. So the Mules on the move now, up 14-0. Here's another dandy throw and catch over the shoulder, Jamar Howard. You just love to see those things. Those kids work so hard on, uh, on those things in practice and in the wind and everything else and a beautiful pass and catch. Here's the end of the rocket screen coming from the outside in. Got good tunnel blocks and another touchdown for Cannon. So now you go for the onside kick up 21 nothing, kind of going for the dagger. Look, everything works. We just need the ball to go a little further. Yeah, it was all set up there. One of those you just shake your head. It's not like... Uh, uh, Zach wasn't trying right there. You bet. He's been a terrific kickoff specialist for the Mules. How about that defense, though? Again, swarming to the football. Again, Ramon Hunter. Again, a redshirt freshman Another making a play. Another young guy, yeah. Impressive. So it's 21-0 here in the second quarter, and there's a sack, and this time it's Josiah Talfa in on the play. He had two sacks in the game for the Mules. A good uh, drag route there by Jamar, but it's punched away and picked up by Fort Hayes State, and so they're going to get the football back. Again, 21-0 our score, and, and the way your team was playing, you felt like it could have been a whole lot worse. Well, it should have been, and, and uh, you know, Jamar didn't feel good about that. We've been uh, terrific in terms of hanging on to the football. First couple of fumbles that we've actually had on offense. And there's Devin King, and again, on a third down, you guys aren't going to let them get anywhere. Eight straight three and outs forced by your defense in the first half. Well, that, uh, that says it all right there. That's about as dominating as it gets. A lot of punts. And Tommy, again, 431 yards of total offense. He ran for 33, got some of it there. Good uh, hard run there on fourth and one by Cam Tornaden. Three times in this game on fourth and one, you went for it from inside enemy territory and converted. And I know a lot of that had to do with the faith you had in your defense. Defense was playing well, and uh, you know we were running the ball well, too. Good pass there to Dyer, who hung on after taking a pop. Popped right up there. Uh, he did take a shot, though. Tommy trying for the timing pattern pass to Howard. Didn't throw it quite high enough, and Fort Hayes State will get the interception. They're fortunate to go to the locker room down 21-0. You didn't allow a first down. They had 18 yards in the first half. Sensational defense. Sensational defense is right, and uh, should have been uh, 35 or 42 to nothing at that point. There's Tommy on a third and long, trying to hustle for some extra yardage. Didn't quite get it. It's fourth down. You play action. You go to the redshirt freshman, Gorman, and he converts. That's, a, that's his second catch for a big first down. That's twice this season you've thrown to a freshman on fourth down for their first catch or second catch of the year. Apparently.
apparently I'm out of my mind. Well, it's working. So uh, you're fooling everybody, <laughs> including the broadcasters. And there's Gorman again racing to the inside. Gets to the eight-yard line on his third catch of the night. And now here's a big touchdown for the Mules. The blitz is coming. Flip it out to Tornadin. Mules score. Again, they went for it on fourth and one. The drive continued 28-0 at that point. I thought that was really the nail in the coffin. It was, and as you saw, that, that was the third time they blitzed us in the red zone and the third time we scored when they did it. Speed sweep to the sophomore Ralph Watson. This time Tommy throws it a little higher up to uh, Jamar Howard who rips it away from Kiki Paul. We'll see it again here using his size and strength to land with that football in the end zone. And 35-7 uh, to 7 our score at this point, and that's, of course, the way we end it, and that's a perfect way to end it as you see a lot of guys out on the field getting an opportunity to play some meaningful minutes there's one of the stars of the hour Tommy Corwin love the way a lot of guys got to play in this one yeah you want to uh, you know get get up have a first half like we did and that you know that's the idea come out in the third quarter not quite how we wanted to but we still got a lot of guys in the game only seven points allowed fewest of the Jim Sabota era fewest in an MIAA road game since 2007 at Emporia State, 613 yards of offense. David Cannon, two touchdown catches, 116 yards and six catches overall. Defense holds Fort Hayes State to one of 15 on third and fourth down. I know a lot of that can be attributed to the way your defense performed on first down. They weren't in manageable situations in later in those uh, sequences. Exactly, and you know if they get you enough in those uh, second and fives and you know third and under fives, it just it just wears you down. And you know they got a lot more in the playbook in those down and distances they, than they do on third and ten. And as I've said, I don't care who you're playing. That's an MIAA team that's on the road, and it's, by the way, five and a half, six hours from Warrensburg. Tough road trip by our standards, not having to go a long way in, in our league. You guys went out there and handled business so well. Has to be a huge confidence boost going into a big one this week at home against Pitt State. It does. Uh, you know, the, the, pl the plan unfolded exactly like we wanted it to, exactly like the kids wanted to. It was really up to them. And, you know, we learned a tough lesson uh, early in the season about being distracted and some of those kinds of things. And they were really focused, and I was proud of them. Run defense was outstanding, obviously, and that is huge. Two weeks ago, we faced a good running team. This week, went on the road, faced a good running team, performed well. And now we're going to come home this Saturday at 1.30, take on Pitt State, one of the top rushing teams in the country. Right. And, uh, you know, you like to, you, you'd rather be moving in that direction when you're playing a, a team that can run the ball like Pitt can. And, uh, you know, I feel good about uh, where we're at and, and the improvement that we made and, and uh, how some of our young players are playing. Also keeps you near the top of the MIAA standings. Again, you've got those five teams kind of at the top of the league and then the five teams at the bottom. There you see the standings. And here's what I like. We've got the, the four games left. And you've got one with Pitt State this week. One with Washburn, final week of the regular season. So two of those teams ahead of you still on the schedule. Great opportunity for our players, and uh, we, you know, we've uh, got a new five-game season, and we're one and zero in that new five-game season, and uh, playing game two. Again, this Saturday, it's the Mules and the fourth-ranked Pittsburgh State Gorillas. Uh, again, they're seven and zero. They are undefeated in league play, obviously, as well. Uh, in addition to their rush attack, number one ranked defense in the league, they are tops in sacks. So pass protection, we bragged on the O-line earlier, five games without allowing a sack. Uh, if, if we can get a sixth game without allowing a sack, I like the Mules' chances. Well, I do too, and, and uh, you know we're, that's uh, obviously our strength. Uh, uh, you know, Pitt State is a terrific uh, you know, rushing the passers. What, they, what they've done, though, uh, is, is they get teams down and force them to throw every time. And when you know a team's going to throw every time, it's a little easier to rush, rush the passer. But they're doing a great job with it. And, uh, you know, uh, the idea is to uh, not be in that situation where you can't mix it up. They're going to put the 60 minutes on the clock. We're going to play that whole 60 minutes. But over the course of watching Pittsburgh State over several years, if they can get you down early a couple scores, they're an awful difficult program to come back on because they can churn it out on the ground. If that happens, it's not to say you're just going to throw in the towel, but creating takeaways, very, very important against that type of offense. And occasionally, as good as they've been in that type of option offense, that rushing offense, they will put it on the ground. Well, uh, you know, they, it depends on how you're handling the ball. If you throw the ball a lot, you probably tend to turn it over, throwing it that way a little bit more, and, and uh, that's just where they are with it. Uh, I don't think they're careless with it, but they, you know, they run the ball a lot, and, and they have some ball handling involved with their zone read and some of their option things. So, 
Um, but yeah, it's difficult uh, when the team's running the ball well. You know, it takes time off the clock, and and so we got to do our job offensively and and uh, take those opportunities when they come to us. What are some of the things you've you've really stressed this week in practice with your football team? Well, obviously, uh, you know, continue the progress that we're making in terms of defending the run, play well in the early downs. Uh, offensively, we got to do a better job of taking care of the ball. It's the only thing that really kept us from uh, really exploding last week, and and uh, you know, we made progress in the running game. So when we can mix it up on offense is when we're the most effective. And then our special teams has been stellar all year long. That's going to be a big factor in this game. They got the two uh, best return phases, uh, punt return and kickoff return in the conference as well. Yeah, I think that's a really interesting matchup to watch because while they lead the league in, in the punt return and the kick return, uh, you'd look there and your team's right there as well. So as often the case in a very, very good matchup, uh, that third phase special teams could be a real difference maker. It will be, and it's going to come down to execution. Uh, sometimes you get those windy days in the fall, and, and uh, that can be a factor and sort of be an equalizer. And uh, this Saturday, it's going to be. It looks like it's going to be a nice day, so it's going to come down to executing and um, you know being in the right position and, and hopefully creating some big plays. You know, it's easy to look at this game and say, okay, we got the Mules, one of the top passing teams in the nation. They're going to try to throw it all over Pitt, and we look at Pitt, and they're one of the top rushing teams in the nation. They're going to try to hammer it at the Mules. But make no mistake, Pitt can throw the ball, and we can run the ball, and we're getting better in that important phase. So don't forget those important elements that each team has in addition to perhaps their greatest strengths. Some, you know, may be the difference in, in, uh, in bo both teams. Uh, we'll see. Uh, you know, the, the games unfold. Uh, there's a lot of ways to win a game. There's a lot of ways to lose a game. And, and uh, we just like to get off to a good start and, and see what happens. Again, it's this Saturday. It's 1.30. It's at Walton Stadium Kennedy Field against fourth-ranked and undefeated Pitt State. Final regular season home game. It's blackout day. We're encouraging everybody to wear black. Uh, students can go over to the Spotlight tailgate, get a free black T-shirt before the game, beginning at 11.30 just east of the stadium. Uh, again, it's senior day. Fifteen guys will be honored. Their final game at home. Coach, I know you remember your senior day. It's always a very special moment. It is a special moment for, for those players and special moment for the coaches. Uh, you know, all those kids uh, love Central and they love mule football. And, uh, you know, it's nice to be able to honor them in a special way. We're also going to help out the ECHO program. We hope you will as well. The Early Childhood Hunger Operation. The UCM Football Coaches Wives, led by Coach Boda's wife, Susie Sabota, they're going to be collecting backpacks. They're asking you to bring a backpack filled with non-perishable food items. We'll give you a cap. That backpack full of food will go to a preschooler in the Warrensburg area who doesn't have enough food to eat on the weekends. Uh, they'll also be selling t-shirts. They'll also be taking monetary and food donations. And Coach Boda, it really didn't get more important than that. Unfortunately, in our community and lots of communities, there are kids that don't have enough food to eat when they're not in school on the weekends. We're going to try to help them out at the football game, also at the uh, basketball scrimmage on Friday night. And uh, Susie, your wife's been a big part of that. Well, I hope a lot of people get involved. It's, uh, it's obviously a great cause. Uh, you know, those are our kids. It's hard to imagine right here in a small community like Warrensburg, but across the country that, uh, you know, there's kids that go home over the weekend and, and don't have anything to eat. And it's, uh, you know, a small thing that we can do, and hopefully a lot of people will participate. Yeah, we're going to try to take some steps towards winning what's really the most important game there uh, feeding our kids and, and giving them a good way of life. Best of luck in the football game on Thanks, Saturday. Sean. Should be a lot of fun. Appreciate it. Coming up next on Sports Page, we'll get to know Mules Junior Free Safety Patrick Lewis. That's next right here on KMOS TV. I'm ready. I'm ready to go. We're getting them ready. I'm ready to read. Ready to try. I'm ready. Estoy listo. Ready for life. I'm ready to speak. It's what we do every day. I'm ready to dream. With the books we provide, the workshops we sponsor. At KMOS TV 6, we're committed to making sure every child in Central Missouri is... Ready. I'm ready. I'm ready to learn. I'm ready to learn. I choose to finish what I start. I choose to accomplish my goals. I choose red to make my family proud. I choose red because I can take classes that work around my schedule. I choose red to advance my career. The University of Central Missouri Summit Center in Lee Summit has academic programs designed to help you finish your degree, advance your career, and discover your potential. Learn more at chooseread.ucmo.edu. 
Load up your golf clubs, grab your spikes, and head out to the first tee. As our way of saying thank you for your financial contribution at the $50 level or higher, KMOS will send you a member card. In addition to great discounts at restaurants, attractions, and bed and breakfast all across Missouri, the member card also offers two-for-one greens fees at several Missouri golf courses. Improve your swing while taking in beautiful lake vistas or experience the rumble at America's only golf course above an active mine. Take your game to the next level by playing around on us. Call 1-800-753-3436 and support KMOS TV, Missouri PBS. Thank you. And once again, thanks for watching Sports Page here on the Central Missouri Sports Television Network. In this segment of the show, we shine the student athlete spotlight on Mules Junior Free Safety, Patrick Lewis. I started playing football my freshman year in high school, which is uh, kind of a late start for a lot of kids. A lot of kids play in Little League and stuff. Uh, I was always a baseball player until I got to high school, and one of my high school coaches really pushed me into it, thought I'd be able to succeed, and I mean, uh, it's obviously been a, one of the best decisions of my life. Coming out of high school, I was recruited by uh, a lot of the MIAA schools. Uh, I came, my first college visit was to UCM, and I knew that this is a place I wanted to come to. I really like the coaches. I like the school. Um, love the players that uh, I got to meet on the visit. And uh, just really like the community and the environment a lot. My goals for the rest of the season this year are just to uh, win the rest of the games that we have, uh, go to the playoffs, you know, make some noise in the national playoffs, and uh, just get better every week as a defense. I think we've definitely gotten better, and I uh, still have a bunch of room for improvement. A practice schedule. We come out on Tuesdays with a full pad practice, you know, it's a lot more physical practice. We work on our tackling and stuff. It's really high energy. We try to get a lot of emotion going and uh, have everybody running around excited. And then as the week goes on, we kind of taper off, get off our legs a little bit more and uh, really get more towards a mental type of practice and really hone in on those kind of skills. And my relationship with the coaches now is uh, great. I've never really had a coach-player relationship like the one I have now. We, uh, the de defense coordinator, Coach Jeter, me and him bounce ideas off each other. You know, he's real good about asking us how we feel about plays and uh, getting our input on stuff. As well as Coach Sabota, he's great. You know, he's always coming around asking us how we're feeling, joking with us. It's just one big family on the team. It's really nice to have. My best friends in the world are on this team. We're, we break it off in one big family. I mean, we're one, we're one family, honestly. It's the most camaraderie team I've ever been a part of. My playing style is pretty intelligent. I like to think of myself as an intelligent football player. I like to watch a lot of film and uh, get, try to get a beat on the team. And also just uh, up-tempo, real physical type of player, you know. Uh, always going out there, not afraid to stick my nose in there and make things happen. As far as your playing style goes, I think there's sometimes you need to change up your playing style based off the team you're playing. Some teams are a lot more run oriented and some are more pass oriented so you got to keep that in the back of your mind with regards to the way you play. Sometimes you got to drop back a little bit more and sometimes you just got to be a little more physical with the run. Uh, the talent on our team this year is great. You know we got real good skilled players, our receivers, one of the more dominant positions in the MIAA. Tommy's obviously having a really good year and on defense we were pretty young at the beginning of the season but we're coming on real strong. Our D-line's playing great football right now as well as the linebackers are playing really well. So I think everything's really coming together nicely towards the end of the season. As far as superstitions go, I'm not, I try not to be too superstitious. Uh, a lot of guys like to get real hyped up and serious before the game. I'm more of a calmer person before the game. I like to get real serious right when I get on the field, but I like to kind of take it easy in the locker room. Uh, maybe talk with some of the guys in my position group about 
going through our scouting reports before the game and giving each other heads up on things we need to look out for and key plays to go through. Mule football is just the fastest 60 minutes on the field, you know, we're fast in your face the whole time. We never let up. Once we get our foot on your throat, you know, we just keep hitting that gas and you know when once it starts clicking, everybody starts feeding off of each other and it's a great feeling once it all comes together. My favorite part about playing for the Mules is uh, honestly just coming out and practice. I mean, like I said, every day I get to spend four hours out here with my best friends. Uh, we just like to have a lot of fun together and uh, just the team atmosphere is my favorite part, definitely. Managing football in school is pretty difficult. I mean, it takes a lot of time to perfect the skill out here. But uh, the coaches do a great job working with us, getting our classes scheduled around our practice time and finding tutors for you if you need them. And also the professors on campus are real good about uh, understanding that you're an athlete and um, say if we have to leave, a, leave early for a game, they're real good about getting us our work early so we can get it done. Hard work for the betterment of the team is something that comes naturally to Lewis as the son of a police officer and a teacher. The junior from Kansas City Park Hill is currently fourth in the MIAA in tackles with 64 and his successful work ethic carries over to the classroom where he carries a 3.45 GPA in sociology. Coming up next on Sports Page, we'll take a look at how all the Mules and Jennies fall sports teams performed this past week and we'll look ahead to basketball season as we talk Mules hoops with head coach Kim Anderson. All of that's on the way when Sports Page continues right after this. I choose to accomplish my goals. I choose to follow through to finish my degree. I choose a university that's convenient and close to home. I choose red to transfer my credit hours without any hassles. I choose red to graduate on time. The University of Central Missouri Summit Center in Lee Summit has academic programs designed to help you finish your degree and discover your potential. Learn more at choosered.ucmo.edu. Imagine America's largest stage, dark. Or the nation's biggest schoolhouse, empty. Or the greatest library of documentary programming, closed forever. It could happen if funding for PBS is eliminated. Find out more about the threat to PBS at 170millionamericans.org because America needs PBS, and PBS needs you. You're watching KMOS Channel 6.1, Sedalia, Warrensburg. Thanks for watching Sports Page here on KMOS TV, Missouri PBS. Coming up next, we'll preview the upcoming basketball season with head coach Kim Anderson. But first, let's look back at how the Mules and Jennies fall sports teams performed this past week. And it was a good week for UCM fall sports. The Jenny soccer team won their 29th straight MIAA match last Thursday with a 2-1 win at Fort Hayes State. Becky Lackey scored the game winner in the 88th minute. On Sunday, the Jens traveled to St. Charles to take on future MIAA foe Lindenwood. The Jens blanked the Lions 4-0. All-American Alyssa Rhodes scored her 10th goal of the season in the victory. The Jens are now 13-1 overall, 5-0 in the league, and they moved up to 10th this week in the NCAA Division II Top 25. The Jennies bowling team opened their season by capturing the title of the 10-team Mid-States Championships held in Wichita, Kansas. The Jens were 183 pins better than second place Wichita State. Gabriella Mayfield was named the most valuable player of the event. The seventh-ranked Jennies volleyball squad recorded their 13th straight shutout win on Tuesday night, 
defeating Emporia State 3-0 at the multi. The win broke the school record for consecutive shutout victories previously held by the 1982 squad. Paula Harris led the way with 15 kills. The Gins are now 18-3 overall. They are 8-0 in the MIAA. And the ninth-ranked Mules golf team finished in fourth place at the Missouri Golf Association Regional Invitational. Held Monday and Tuesday at Jefferson City Country Club, Jason Van finished in 11th to pace the Mules in their final event of the fall season. Mules basketball season is right around the corner with practice getting underway last Saturday. Joining us now to preview the upcoming season is head coach Kim Anderson. Coach A, welcome back to Sports Page. Oh, it's great to be here, Sean. Year number 10. That's tremendous. Year number 10 for you. It's hard to believe that it's been that long. You're already the winningest coach in Mules basketball history, and I know you're excited about the prospects for your 10th season. Well, I am. I think, you know, we've got a lot of new guys. This is a team that... Uh, uh, we have six guys returning from last year, and then we have nine new players. So uh, it's it's been an interesting uh, couple of weeks as far as getting things put together. But I like our talent, and uh, I like our effort so far, and, and I think we have the chance to be a, a really good team uh, if we come together. 18 and 11 last year, one year removed from an outright MIAA championship and a trip to the Sweet 16 in Division II. What's the number one thing you and your assistants looked for when you headed out on the recruiting trail to formulate this team? Well, there were actually two main goals, and, and we were able to, uh, at least on paper, answer both of them. The first one was to um, secure some more uh, ball handling uh, guys or, or point guards, I guess you would call them. Last year, we went into the season with with uh, not enough point guards, and Lance Beckwith got hurt after four games, and and it forced uh, Bryce Bruns and DJ Slifer to play the point. Even had to play Boo Harvey there or uh, Boo Hunter there or some. So it, it it put us in a bind really for the whole year. Now we've gone out and we've got uh, you know now we've got five guys who can play the point. And Lance is back, DJ's back, and then we have three other guys. And then the other thing, we graduated uh, all of our big guys basically. And so we had to get some size, and, and we really feel uh, good about our size uh, that we brought in and, and three guys that we think that can, can play uh, around the basket and can score points. And, 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 and so we were able to address those, and, and hopefully as time, as the season rolls on, we'll, hopefully they'll end up playing well. Well, you only have six returners, and only four of which played last year at all. You've got nine new guys uh, in the mix. How have the returners helped maybe these new guys understand your expectations? Oh, I think they've done a good job, and we talked about that a lot early. We, with, uh, you know, in particular guys who uh, who played some minutes, uh, you know, Boo Hunter, Reggie Stallings, uh, Dusty Allen, DJ Slifer, those guys, you know, played some, some substantial minutes a year ago. So, um, and of course, Lance and Dominique Long were hurt, so uh, they've all got experience and they've done a good job, I think, of carrying that over to our guys. Uh, now there's competition, and uh, uh, there's a, there's a uh, a lot of competition going on between uh, new guys and old guys, and old guys and old guys, and new guys and new guys. And that's what we like to create. I'm not a guy that likes to bring in five guys and say these are my starters, and then these other eight guys are going to come in off the bench. Uh, our practices have been very competitive, and I would anticipate them uh, continuing to be that way. In your nine years, your team's kind of established a philosophy you call mule ball, which is really tough uh, defense, and then turning that defense into offense. You had a solid season last year with 18 wins, but nobody wanted to really call it mule ball last year because it wasn't up to the standard that those previous groups had established with the stifling defense and getting out and running and turning that into offense. Does this group have a chance to do that, get back to that? Yeah, they do. You know, I, I really don't, and, and people will, will think maybe I'm crazy, we haven't really played mule ball for two years. And, and you know, we won 27 games the year before without playing mule ball. Uh, last year was nothing near mule ball. But in defense of those guys, they did a great job last year of, of uh, band-aiding things together and being able to um, uh, put together a solid season. This team has that capability. They're, of course, when you have that many new guys, they come from all different backgrounds. They have all different uh, purposes defensively. Uh, they got to buy into what we want to do. But we have the we have the athletic ability, we have the quickness, uh, 
to play that type of basketball, but it's uh, it'll come down to executing and having guys uh, understand what we want. And you know, we're getting there. We're getting there, but it's still awful early. What do you want out of this group? What style of play is this particular group you think capable of? Well, I, I think they're capable of scoring points. Um, you know, I I, uh, I I put together the other day. I was thinking about you know the recruiting class and. I added up the amount of points per game, and it was 114 that this recruiting class had had uh, amassed. Uh, we're not going to score 114, but I do think they have an ability to score. So, but uh, you know, the team two years ago could just outscore people, and uh, with Sanjay and Moose and Tremaine and those guys, um, I think this team needs to guard, and uh, I I want them to guard. That's the way I want to play. So. Uh, we got to play. We got our, our two biggest challenges. I think are uh, defensively and then rebounding. I think we've got big bodies. I think we've got athletic bodies. But I don't know if we've got guys uh, yet who just go crazy for the basketball when it's on the board. So hopefully that hopefully that'll develop. With so many new faces, I'm guessing right now. Just a few days into practice, things are flying pretty fast and furious at the new guys. They are, and and you know we've had to uh, kind of watch ourselves a little bit. We got to we got to slow down a little bit because um, you know, we've had a lot of stuff going on in the preseason. Uh, there's Coach Stewart was at practice yesterday giving some advice, but uh, we've had to kind of slow down a little to, to get our guys to understand, and we haven't been able to throw as much at them as we would have liked. There's some practice footage from yesterday. You mentioned that you had a lot of wins in the gym. You had Coach Stewart, Norm Stewart, of course, the Basketball Hall of Famer uh, at the collegiate level, and then you had Bud Lathrop, who's a, certainly a, a Hall of Famer as well uh, from Raytown South. That's a lot of wins in the gym. Well, I, I added it up. It's almost 1,700 wins, so uh, I had to be on my toes yesterday because I certainly got a lot of advice. Well, let's uh, look at a little practice here. Uh, you know, you talked about the returners, uh, Boo Hunter, Reggie Stallings, those are the two returners that have the most floor experience for you. But obviously, with so many new guys and your expectations, they'll have to adapt their role in this their senior campaigns. Yeah, and, and I would anticipate, uh, you know, Boo, Boo had a lot of pressure on him last year to score points. Uh, I don't think he'll have that same pressure this year. Uh, Reggie, uh, I think Reggie is a guy we need to rely on to be a great defender, uh, to be a lockdown defender. Uh, he's got to accept that role, and I think he has. Uh, but that's the, the thing I think those guys can help us out with and can add to our team. There's Reggie in the background as you're talking things over. Lance Beckwith, uh, you lost him at the very beginning of last year. You expected him to be a point guard for you uh, to a really tough knee injury. And I know nobody has worked harder in preparation for this year than Lance. Boy, he's done a great job. I mean, our training staff, Ron Dubuque, has just done a tremendous job of uh, of getting him ready to play. And, and Lance has done a great job, and he's had good practices so far. And uh, you know, we just just hope and pray that everything he stays healthy, his knees solid. Uh, because he certainly worked awful hard to get back. Nine newcomers. I know there's a lot of these guys you expect to come in and make an immediate impact. Talk about some of those fellas. Well, you know, there, there, there is, and, and I think we start with the guards. Uh, young man, Widget Washington, uh, I believe number 12 here, if uh, he comes onto the screen. A very quick, very athletic guy. Scored there he is with the shirt cross. Uh, scored about 27 points a game in junior college last year, and he really... Uh, He's really fast. You know, he can get up and down the floor. Uh, Yavario Smith, a young man from Tennessee, uh, which is from Kansas City. Yavario is from, uh, actually from South Carolina, but played his junior college basketball in Tennessee, has really impressed me in the last few days. Uh, he's become very solid. He doesn't say a lot. He just plays. And uh, he's kind of a one-two. He's a guy that can shoot it pretty good, got good athletic ability, good quickness. Um, Dominique Newton is a, a young man from Kansas City at Raytown South. Actually played for Coach Lathrop uh, a little bit before he retired and played at State Fair. Uh, another guy, a solid point guard type of player that uh, we think can contribute a lot for us. Um, you know, those guys and then the big guys, um, you know, Matt Webb from Kansas City played at State Fair, 6'7", strong inside player. 
Uh, Alex Dean is a, a 6'6 player from Milwaukee who played in uh, Tennessee at junior college. Really a tenacious rebounder. Uh, plays very hard. Very impressed about how hard he plays. He's kind of starting to figure it out a little bit. Uh, and then Will Kirksey, uh, a young man we just signed not too long ago, was slated to go to a Division I school. Uh, is from St. Louis and uh, big body, 6'8", 240. Um, you know, those guys, along with Andrew Whitehead, who's a 6'7 shooter, uh, Preston Oaks, a young man from Kansas City who uh, is really uh, a, so or a freshman, uh, he's a guy we think uh, uh, down the road can help us. Last year, you didn't have enough depth. Uh, this year, you've got lots of depth right now and lots of competition. And I know as a coach, nothing beats that competition, raising the intensity level in practice. Well, I love it. I, I just think that's that's how you get better. And uh, uh, we have a tremendous amount of competition. Uh, and, and unfortunately, at some point, you know, there'll have to be a reduction just because you can't play 15 guys. You know, I would anticipate at least a couple of our guys, maybe three of them redshirting. But still, when you get into that 11-12 range, it's still hard. So, um, you know, competition's been very, very intense. Uh, you know, we've got a couple scrimmages, uh, you know, coming up uh, uh, where we'll get a chance to evaluate our guys. We've got the, the uh, uh, Meet the Mules and Jennies on Friday night, uh, which will give our guys a chance to play in front of uh, people for the first time. And that's really important to us. Uh, you know, and I really appreciate everybody, and I know you did a lot of work on that, but just getting that opportunity to play in front of people. You know, that's different. You, we're going to Austin P. there'll be 5,000 people, and then we're going to Mizzou where there'll be ten or 15,000 people, and that's different than playing in a gym without anybody. So that, that'll be, I think that'll be big for us. And there you see it, it's free. It's Friday night at 6 o'clock. It's at the multi. Each team will scrimmage for basically a half. Uh, the pet band will be there, cheerleaders, mule kickers. We're going to give away prizes. The teams will sign autographs after the game. All that's free. And uh, all we really ask is that you bring a donation for the ECHO program, the Early Childhood Hunger Operation. They'll be selling T-shirts. Uh, they'll be taking donations if you bring a backpack full of non-perishable food items that'll go to a preschooler in our community that doesn't have enough food to eat on the weekend. We'll give you a cap courtesy of UCM Athletics. So you got a chance to get a cap tomorrow night. You got a chance to get autographs to the Mules and Jennies. You got a chance to watch and then enter all the free drawings and maybe take away a whole bunch of stuff. So uh, that's a great opportunity for the fans in addition to your team. Well, like I said, it's big for us because it gives us a chance to play in front of a crowd uh, and we hope we have a lot of people there, and, and I know there's a big football game Saturday, mm -hmm. and uh, so I hope there'll be a lot of students that'll wander over about six o'clock and watch. And um, you know, we can scrimmage all we want, but being able to scrimmage in front of people certainly helps us, and um, our guys are excited about that possibility. I want to congratulate you and your sister Kathy. Of course, uh, Kathy is our senior associate AD for internal ops. Was a a Hall of Fame uh, athlete here at Central Missouri. I uh, was on Team USA, is back here now. Of course, you were a great player at Sedalia Smith Cotton along with Kathy, great player at Mizzou All Century Team and their Hall of Fame. Uh, you're being honored by the Missouri Sports Hall of Fame in the Filbert Five, which will honor siblings who had a, a big impact on basketball in the Show Me State. And I can't think of a better sibling duo than Kim and Kathy Anderson uh, to go into the Missouri Sports Hall of Fame as part of the Filbert Five. I know that's coming up November 2nd in Springfield, and I know it means a whole lot to you because of your relationship with the late Gary Filbert. Well, you know what? It, it's really a, a, a tremendous honor to be associated with Gary Filbert. And, uh, I know probably many people watching this show, I know we go up into Mexico and Moberly in that area, you know just how great a person he was. Uh, a, a dear friend of mine who passed away about a year ago or less than a year ago, and to be uh, associated with him in any category has been great. I learned a lot from Gary Filbert. Um, and then the other thing is to, to, to have my sister get the recognition that I think she deserves because uh, she grew up at a time uh, when women's basketball was really not very important. She only was, played nine games in high school. Right, and right. And played on Team USA. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and she came here and and uh, the, the, the legend, uh, Dr. Millie Barnes, coached her and, and uh, you know, learned, she learned so much from Dr. Barnes and, and uh, you know, so it's a great honor for our family, but but not for me, but but to be associated with Coach Filbert and be and to have my sister recognized and 
you know, it'll be great. My dad will be able to be there and my wife and, and my kids. So it'll be, it'll be a lot of fun. Speaking of fun, before we let you go, November 3rd at Austin P. That's the uh, Brady and Ryan Luce game. Uh, of course, your associate head coach, his dad, Dave's the head coach and AD down there. He wants to see his grandkids before the season. You get to play Austin P. And then November 7th, we're in Columbia to take on Mizzou in an exhibition game. We're going to have a, a reception at the Holiday Inn Select at the Sports Zone before the game, beginning at uh, 5 o'clock for all of you that want to come out and be a part of the UCM side of things. And then the game, so uh, a couple of great opportunities for your guys coming yeah, up. Yeah, the Austin Pete thing's great. You know, it's obviously great for Brad and, and great for Dave and Phyllis. His mm -hmm. parents, they get to see their grandkids. And um, But from a basketball standpoint, that's been just so good for our team because, you know, Coach Dave is a great coach. Uh, you know, we do a lot of things he does. Sometimes it's a mirror game. Sometimes it's both of us doing the same thing. Uh, so it's been a great trip for us, and then and then obviously to get to play Mizzou is, should be fun for our guys. You know, Mizzou's very good. I, I saw him practice a couple weeks ago. Very athletic. Um, it'll be fun for our guys to be able to go into Mizzou Arena and play. Hopefully, we have a lot of fans there. I think it's. Uh, uh, you know, it should be a fun night for everybody. Hopefully we'll have a lot of fans tomorrow night at the Multi, 6 o'clock, Friday night, free basketball, chance to see the Mules. Thanks for the visit. Be we'll great. talk to you again soon. All right, thanks, Josie. In just a moment on Sports Page, we'll head to the volleyball court as we get to know Jenny's sophomore setter, Julia Bates. That's next here on KMOS-TV. KMOS TV is my source for entertainment. I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoy all of the musical entertainment that KMOS provides for Central Missouri. I choose to accomplish my goals. I choose to follow through to finish my degree. I choose a university that's convenient and close to home. I choose red to transfer my credit hours without any hassles. I choose red to graduate on time. The University of Central Missouri Summit Center in Lee Summit has academic programs designed to help you finish your degree and discover your potential. Learn more at choosered.ucmo.edu. Hi, I'm Ken Burns. My films explore uniquely American stories about the extraordinary people and times that make up our history. I can't imagine telling my stories anywhere but on PBS, the one place that invites all Americans from every walk of life to discover new places, new ideas, and the bigger world around us. And I'm grateful for the role you play. Supporting your local station ensures that together we can continue to share these stories. Thank you. I think that Frontline is the single best uh, television series uh, on television today and uh, when I watch Frontline I feel proud that I am not only an American but that I've been involved all of my professional life with PBS. Hi, my name is Ken Burns and PBS is my source for Frontline, the best show on television. Stay tuned to KMOS Channel 6.1, Sedalia, Warrensburg. I started playing volleyball in the fifth grade. I started doing club because my aunt was a volleyball coach and she wanted me to come and try out for a club, so I did. And then I just have been playing since then and fell in love with it. I actually didn't find out about here until February of my senior year in high school. And they just started talking to me and I came on a visit here. It was actually like blizzarding, <laughs> but I went on the campus and I fell in love with it and I liked it a lot, so I just knew from then that I wanted to come here and play. I like all the 
coaches and all the girls and it was a really good feeling when I came on my visit and the coaches are were a really big part of it. So my relationship with the coaches are really close. Um, they're kind of just like my parents. I mean, they pretty much do anything for me, I feel like. And they're really helpful and they keep me in line. So it's good. <laughs> uh, my relationship with my teammates is I'm kind of like all sisters. It's like having 18 sisters with you every day. All of us are friends and it's really close. So it's really fun. We all hang out and everyone gets along. So that's good as opposed to other teams who have drama. But my playing style is aggressive. I try and put the ball so it's able to be hit. Like that's the number one thing, just to make sure that the ball is hittable and just try and better the passer's ball if it's not where it needs to be, but I try and just be aggressive with it and play smart. In practice, we focus on basically just our skills and um, what the other team is going to do, how we're going to react to that, and we run the other team's like plays where they're going to hit, and we try and adjust our defense to what they're going to do. So we watch film to see what plays they'll run and who are their best hitters, who we should serve, stuff like that. I don't have any superstitions. I just like to listen to music really and get pumped up. Um, I wouldn't say I have anything weird going on, but some girls do. And I don't know. I try to stay away from that because then it will get to my head. Uh, it's a lot of fun playing with everyone. Like I've seen other programs like when I go on visits and it's nothing like this environment. Like it's totally awesome playing with all these girls and the coaches are great. So I think that's a big part of it. My major is sports management. Uh, no, I haven't really explored any of the options yet, but uh, my brother did it in college and he seemed to enjoy it, so I figured that would be something that I would enjoy as well. It's not very difficult to manage volleyball in school because we have a lot of help. The coaches help, uh, the upperclassmen help a lot with like picking classes and stuff like that. And if we need help, we can get a tutor through some of the advisors and that's really helpful. But as far as homework goes, I we usually have time at night to do homework, so there's really no time restrictions or anything like that. I think if we keep playing the way we have been, then it will turn out very well. Um, we've been playing really strong, keeping it at three games for the most part. And I think that's really important to just keep playing through every game and play hard during every point because that's what the best teams do. The Leavenworth Kansas product was a second team All-American as a freshman and as a sophomore she leads the MIAA in assists per game. She also takes care of business in the classroom with a 3.56 GPA. In just a moment, we'll tell you where all the Mules and Jennies are competing this weekend as Sports Page rolls on after this. The big thing with the KMOS Ready to Learn program isn't just, you know, come watch our shows, but then they want you to turn it off and read a book. My source for quality children's education is KMOS TV. Create. It inspires me. I love cooking with Ming. Oh, no, 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 no. Jacques Pepin is the man. I knew how to fix a furnace, but now I know the hot spots of Rio. I've turned shacks into castles, and now I can fill them with antiques. And I caught you watching that quilting show. And I'm getting pretty good. <laughs> Hi, I'm Kevin O'Connor. And I'm Tom Silva. And we, we love, love to watch Create. Create. It inspires us. To create with you. KMOS TV is a nonprofit organization owned and operated by the University of Central Missouri. The station relies upon many people, businesses, and organizations in order to provide programming services to thousands of people throughout Central Missouri. We can't do it alone. We need people to contribute as members, 
as corporate partners and through major gifts and bequests, which can be arranged through a will. Public broadcasting faces many challenges in the years ahead as it competes in an increasingly cluttered media marketplace. But public television strives to be different. If this difference has been important to you, then I hope you'll consider a significant contribution to KMOS TV through a major gift or bequest to keep KMOS TV and the entire public broadcasting system going strong. You can call KMOS TV to get more information on how you can make a contribution that will change lives for the better for decades to come. And we're back for one final time this week here on Sports Page. Before we put the finishing touches on this week's show, let's run down our upcoming schedule of UCM Athletic Sporting Events so you know where to go to follow the Mules and Jennies. Big football game this Saturday as the Mules host the fourth-ranked Pittsburgh State Gorillas at 1.30 on Senior Day Saturday at Walton Stadium Kennedy Field. It's the final regular season home contest of the year. It's the blackout game. All fans are encouraged to wear black. UCM students who attend the Spotlight Tailgate at 11.30 a.m. east of the stadium will receive a free blackout t-shirt. The UCM football coaches' wives will be accepting donations for the early childhood hunger operation that provides food to preschoolers on weekends when they aren't in school. Anyone who brings a backpack filled with non-perishable food items will receive a cap courtesy of UCM Athletics while supplies last. The Echo Group will also be selling t-shirts for 10 bucks each. Food and monetary donations will also be accepted. Of course, we'll have broadcast coverage beginning at 12.10 on the UCM Sports Radio Network. And for $8, you can log on to our website, ucmo.edu forward slash athletics, and watch the video webcast produced by the students and staff here at KMOS TV. In other MIAA games this week, Washburn travels to Northwest Missouri for a big conference showdown. Truman is at Missouri Western, Emporia State's at Lincoln. In non-conference action, Fort Hayes State's at Central Oklahoma, and SBU is at Missouri Southern. The seventh-ranked Jennings volleyball team will face fifth-ranked Washburn Friday night at 7 in Topeka in a battle for the top spot in the MIAA. On Saturday afternoon, the Jens will continue their swing through the Sunflower State as they face Fort Hayes State. On Tuesday, the Jens will be in Bolivar to battle SBU. The 10th-ranked Jenny soccer team will host Missouri Southern Saturday night at 7. It's senior night and the final regular season home match. The UCM cross-country teams will take part in the MIAA Championships October 22nd, this Saturday in Joplin. The Mules are the defending league champs. And the UCM basketball teams will host Meet the Mules and Jennies this Friday night at 6 at the Multi. The event is free. Each team will scrimmage for a half. Prizes will be given away. Donations will be accepted for the Early Childhood Hunger Operation, again, that provides food to preschoolers on weekends when they aren't in school. Anybody who brings a backpack to the scrimmage Friday night filled with non-perishable food items will receive a cap courtesy of UCM Athletics. And it's time now for our weekly Sports Page Trivia Question. Each week, we give you a chance to win a prize from UCM Athletics. And last week, we asked you what schools are set to join the MIAA next year. The correct answer is Lindenwood, Northeastern State of Oklahoma, Central Oklahoma, and Nebraska Kearney. Diane emailed us first, so she wins a UCM Athletics t-shirt. This week, our question is, who is the winningest coach in Mules basketball history? You know the answer, you want a chance to win a prize, send it to the address on your screen or email it to sportspage at kmos.org. And with that, we wrap up another edition of the UCM Sports Page. As always, we hope you enjoyed the show and we invite you to tune in again next Thursday night at 7, Saturday at 5 to keep up with the UCM Mules and Jennies. You can also watch the show throughout the week on our website at ucmo.edu forward slash athletics and join the over 1,400 folks who follow us on Twitter at UCM Mules. Until next time, for our entire crew, this is Sean Jones saying thanks for watching Sports Page here on KMOS TV, Missouri PBS.
Support for Sports Page is provided by Parker's Supermarket and Pharmacy in Warrensburg. Parker's works hard to supply grocery staples and spices to cook Italian, Mexican, Chinese, Indian, and Thai cuisine. The mission at Parker's is to make grocery shopping a welcoming experience for everyone. By First Central Bank, full service banking from six locations in Warrensburg, Holden, Higginsville, and Odessa. More information is available on their Facebook page or at the website firstcentral.net. Member FDIC. And by Union Station, Crossroads to Technology, a one-stop shopping source for technology needs, campus-compatible computers, software for Mac and PCs, and much more. Located on campus, on the lower floor of the Elliott Union in Warrensburg. Union Station, Crossroads to Technology. And promotional support for Sports Page is provided by 1450 Coco and 98.5 The Bar. 1450 Coco and 98.5 The Bar, the radio home of University of Central Missouri Athletics.